Hey everybody, today we're going to look at Dynamo and Workset Assignment. So this is a general case, this isn't um, something that would be very typical, uh, but I've had it in the past where clients requested that certain items, before we turned over the model, certain items need to be on certain work sets. That, I don't know why that's the case, I think they were using it for visibility reasons, uh, which is typically frowned upon. But um, I want to. I created these this Dynamo script along with a variety of, of Python functions that you can use and tweak. Like I've mentioned in the past, my channel isn't there to show you the picks and clicks. Uh, I think there's other channels that do a better job at that. And what I want to do is give you the resources to use. I know that's what I've. Uh, that's what always helped me. That's why this channel was created in the first place to give you the stuff you needed to get you know your job done uh, fast. So, and then plus I always learn that way too. Download, see how this stuff works, look at the different functions, see how the data flows through Dynamo graphs. And so you learn a lot by that, by just doing that. Um, and just really, you know, digging into these scripts. So, um, with that said, there's going to be a GitHub repo. So I'm changing from OneDrive to a GitHub repo where you can find all the different resources. Um, so you'll find the link below pointed to a It'll be a it'll be a GitHub repo for all like Vim coordinator uh, resources, but then each link like each video in the descriptions is going to be unique because I'm going to have it pointed to the specific folder, so you don't have to be going into that repo and looking for it. So hopefully that'll make things easier for you guys. Um, also, there's going to be a repo, and th this one already exists, but I put all my Python libraries in there, uh, and I'll have that link below as well. But today we'll we'll show you. Um, I'll show you some Python stuff, and there's a bunch of workset functions that are all within their own workset library that you can import and use on your projects um, or in your own Dynamo graph. So, the link for that is below as well. So, before we jump over to Dynamo, I'll tell you what we're gonna what we're gonna what we're gonna do here. So, this is a general script. We're gonna look at um, matching worksets to element categories. So. If it's a wall and um, we have, uh, what we do is we'll have a wall and we'll have a work set called wall. Window, window work set. And so we'll just match those up. If the work set doesn't exist, we'll create those work sets. So uh, also, heads up, uh, I've got uh, one more day left with this Revit um, version. I... Uh, I'm gonna have to get in uh, eventually a license. I'm gonna do videos uh, talking about other topics, but if you wanna, um, you know, donate or support the channel in other ways, check those out. There's a, a PayPal link below, and the Patreon is on my page. So if you want, check those out. But not a big deal if not. Nothing will ever be behind a paywall. So just a heads up. Everything that I'll always create will be free for you guys. So let's jump into Dynamo. All right, so like I said, it's not a picks and clicks kind of vid you know, video. We're not gonna go through all of this stuff, but I'm gonna show it to you. Uh, you can download this and use it and tweak this and definitely reach out if you have troubles with it. So, um, so my bad if, it, if I'm not going into too much detail uh, for you. Um, so first off, we got our libraries here. I've gotta clean this up. Not all these libraries are being used. The first bit uh, is the elements. So we have all our elements. In this case, we're just manually selecting. There's about 3,000 elements here. We import those in, and then what we have is a whole bunch of different functions. Uh, and then down here is where they actually get used, just right there. So we'll just walk through these functions and talk about them. And then I've got some like discrete, you know, some comments in there. So hopefully those are helpful for you. But the first one is, is this just the default one? You'll see this in a lot of Dynamo graphs. Um, but it is the checklist. So it just sees if that input or that elements or the input is a list. If it's not, return it as a list. And so that's what we do here when we use that function. All right, so the second one, get all user work sets. So we don't want to later on when we're looping through work sets and all that, we don't want to mess around with like 
non-user work sets, so all the default ones that are created when you create a uh, work shared model. What we want to do is just loop through and just look at the list of user created ones when we check to see if that work set exists before we go to create it. We just want to make sure that we're looping through the only the user created work sets, which by default is work set one and then the shared levels and grid uh, work set that's created. So um, this just just this just returns a list of the user work sets. Now we create new work sets. Uh, in Revit, so that's what this function does. Pretty simple, it just creates a new work set, it takes in a string. Um, and so you can see here that this act, the actual method, it, it takes in a string. So that name could be walls, uh, and it creates that work set. This here, clean up string for work set, not a work set related thing, but um, this method here, or this function, what it does is it just takes in a string and it cleans out all the special characters because there's some items or elements within Revit that uh, are the category of those elements. So there's some elements with a category that have special characters in them. We just want to make sure we catch all that so we don't run into any errors. So that's what this function does. Down here, what we do is we actually loop through all of our elements. So, all right, because we don't want, because what we're going to do later is what we're going to do is loop through a list of categories uh, and that's what we'll use to create our work sets we don't want to loop through a whole bunch of walls and stuff and have it sit there and check to see oh if wall exists you know and so on so this just all this does is cleans that up really quickly so for i and elements and then it appends it uses that clean function it appends the category name so it's a clean version of the category name it appends it to this empty list up here and then we just make turn that into a set which then just grabs it and makes each uh, item in there unique so instead of like a hundred different wall walls in that list there's just one all right so now this function here it checks to see if work set exists so um, if the work set exists, then um, then what it will do is return true, and then if it does, or sorry, if i dot name equals to name, return true, else return false. So this just checks to see if work set exists. So it takes in the name or takes in doc, it takes in the new name that we're that you're going to create, and then it takes in the work set, so all of them, the user created ones. So for i and work set, it loops through the work sets, and then it says um, if i equals name, and then it'll return true, and then we won't, because uh, you can see down here when we actually check to see, we want it to equal false. Because if it's true, it does exist, then we won't create that work set, and we'll skip past it, return false otherwise. Um, all right, so the next one's create work set from element category name. All right, so create work set from category. All this takes in is uh, our elements. We have our work sets. This one returns our user work sets, which we saw before. And these are this is an empty list that we'll append to when, uh, with all our new work sets that we created. So for work set name in element, so because it's still the elements, but it's the uh, a work set name. Actually, let me rephrase that. So this input is called elements so this might be a little bit confusing but if we scroll down what we see here create work set from category what i'm passing into it is all categories so if we scroll back up we'll see that that this here which we went over earlier that's all categories it's just the the name and it's it's a set so it's clean and it's easy for it to loop through so to make them uh, i guess a little bit clearer i think i'm going to rename that which we'll have to go in here and just rename everything. All right, that should should be good. So so we've got doc and then all categories and all category names. 
And so here we got four work set name in all categories. If work set uh, or check work set, it checks to see if it's available um, or if it exists already. And if it doesn't, if it's false, then go ahead and create that work set. And then it uses our create function. And then we append that work set to the new work sets list. And then that's what we return when this function's over. All right, and now this is our last one. This one sets the work set for elements. So all this up here creates the work set for us. And then this last function here actually sets the work set for the element. So it takes in the actual elements uh, for the, um, the, the actual real elements. Unlike up here, where it was a little bit confusing, where this actually takes in the category names. This takes in the, the elements. So this input up here. So now uh, what this does is we have our work sets. So we return our user work sets. We say for I and elements. Uh, and now the rest of this is it checks the C or not the rest of this, sorry. That what this does is it checks to see if element work set property is read only. So it goes for I an element, grabs that element, and then what we do is we get the ordered parameters, and then we loop through those ordered parameters that are associated with that element, and then we say if p.definition equals work set, then what we do is we check to see if that work set uh, or if it's set to false. If it's set to false on read only, it means that we can write to it. Because the reason why we're doing that is because there's some elements um, that you can tab into that have the work set property, but they're driven by the parent parents of that like system. And so, for an example, stairs is is one is one is one of those. So landings, if you tab into landings, you'll see work sets available. It's an available parameter, but you can't do anything. You can't set uh, anything on it. So what this does is it just checks that real quick. And then uh, if that's false, then we'll loop through 4J and work sets, which is gonna be our user work sets, which is what we have up there. And then it says, and again, like this is why we want just the user work sets because we do not want to be looping through every one of every default work set and the user work sets to find, you know, which one matches. Because the next part of this is it takes in their category name and it runs it through the clean string so that it matches what would have been put into the actual work set uh, or at, put into the. Uh, uh, um, to the work sets as a you know uh, an actual work set so like wall we want to make sure that whatever the category name is it matches it and if it does match one of the work sets in there then um, then go ahead and set go ahead and set the um, work set to the proper one so that's what this does here and then after that it breaks it and then restarts the whole process for the next element and so on so anyways those are the functions those are all the different things in there you what you can do from here is actually import this as a library which i have in the repo below you can find all the information for that and you can pull in some of these methods or i'm um, sorry not methods but some of these functions or all of them and use them in your own way or you can just download this dynamo script and tweak it from there so um, just to show you guys that this actually works, uh, what we have here is our two main uh, functions because the other functions are being used, but they're being used within these functions. So we've got our two main ones, create work set from category and then set work set. And so what we'll do, what we'll do now is run this and then We'll make sure everything works. So I may pause this because this does take a minute uh, for it to loop through and check all this stuff. So I'm going to pause the video and then and then uh, when we when I unpause it, we'll jump over to Revit and just verify that the elements have the proper uh, work sets. 
All right, so it didn't take very long. I think after I paused it, it only took like 10 or 15 more seconds after that. So this is our output. So we've got an empty list, um, which is our first here, create, create work set from category. Oh yes, because I created the work sets earlier, so I forgot to purge those out. So that's why that's empty. <laughs> so my bad. Um, I uh, you can still download this sample model or just open one up. You can run it and see how that works. But um, you can see there it checked. So it checked to see if those work sets existed. They already did, so it skipped over them. Um, and then and then what it did is it went in there and set. The different elements so so now if we switch over over here we should we should see that all these are they all should have the proper work sets so roofs Generic models. Walls. And then just so that you guys can see what I was talking about earlier. We can tab into that and you can see it's a landing, but you can see the work set is stairs because it's a sub, you know, element within the system. So when we're looping through those elements, we don't want to grab these ones. And this was something that I forgot to note down, but since we're looking at it, this was something I wanted to show you guys on how like I break these problems down and try to figure them out. Because originally when I wrote this, I ran into all sorts of issues because it was grabbing those elements and it was filtering. And so I put the try and accepts in there to try. But I was like, I was thinking about it and um, about these, you know, stairs and other, because uh, I think like um, curtain walls kind of operate in the same way. I was like, oh, you know, what we can do is check to see if there's a parameter that will tell us that it's read only. And so what I use... To figure that out is uh, the Revit lookup. So under add-ins, if you install this, you can go to Revit lookup. We can snoop the uh, the current selection, which in this case is that landing. And then what we can do is go down to parameter set. And um, if you remember it, and let me see if I can drag it. So here, what we've done, we go right here we go to get ordered parameters so right here so let me so get order parameters and then what we can do is loop through these and then grab the work set one so that's what what's happening here is we're looping through it and we say if p definition dot name so definition is this and then name, where's the name? Right up here, name equals work set, then, then p dot is read only equals equals false. And read only, so this checks the name. And then so when we figure that out, what we do is we just grab work set and then we just returned this property right here. So is read only true. And if it isn't, it reads out false. So lookup table is incredibly powerful. Definitely recommend uh, checking that out. I forgot to note it down, but it was something I really wanted to show you guys. I use this tool all the time for um, exactly things like this. It's like, I know we can do this, but I don't know where that property is or how to get to it. And so this is a, a great way to figure out that stuff. So yeah, 
that's um, all I got. And so the, all of this stuff is going to be in a, a Python like um, module that you can import. So up here, you can see that I've imported um, this path here, so Python module which I actually think it's a different name now, but what I can do is I can path to all my different um, Python modules. And the workset one is one of those. And so what you guys can do is go to that repo, download it, and use it however way you want. So this is what it looks like, looks like uh, now. Also, I'm not a you know Python developer. Uh, you know, I'm sure there's a more proper way to organize this stuff. But the way that I've done is, here's my, the, my modules that are available. You can go to my repo and download them. And then I've just got them named something. So in this case, it's work sets. And then in there is just a bunch of functions you can use uh, for working with work sets. Uh, I think I have to add the libraries that are being associated with this so you don't have to import those or figure out those. So I'm still working on this, but it is already available if you need to, to download it and use it. You can also clone the repo and just path it and append it, add it as one of your paths in your Dynamo node or Dynamo Python node. But anyways, that's all I got guys. If you want to check out the Patreon, feel free to do it. Check out the PayPal donation stuff. Feel free to do it. That would help me out a ton because I'm, uh, I've got to buy all this stuff eventually. Um, so check those out if you want. But again, none of this is going to be behind paywalls. It'll always be free to you. So anyways, thanks a lot for watching. Let me know. Uh, if you like the video, feel free to comment, like, and, and whatever. But I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot.